We talked about garbage collection and we talked about the mark and sweep implementation. So now let's think of the impact of garbage collection in our implementation of heap. So we define the heap and let's say this is our initial heap where we have three environments. E0 is the root environment and then we have E1 that points to E0 and E2 that points to E0. After garbage collection, we would have the following memory, right? So we'd have E0 and E2. So now the question is, what happens, what would happen if we would, were to allocate a new uh, environment, right? So let's say we are running our code, we do garbage collection, we, now we have this memory. And after this, we allocate a memory, we allocate a, a new environment. What would happen? What do you think would happen? So try to answer that while looking at this code. Okay, so I hope you've thought about it and may perhaps even pause the video to try to get an answer. Um, so the question is, what would be the new, let's say you allocate a new environment, what would be the number of that environment? What would be the handle of that environment? So maybe pause the video and try to think about the answer. Okay, so I hope you pause the video. And if you look at the implementation, if you allocate a new environment, what's going to happen is, is that you're going to have another, you're going to allocate the new environment over E2 as well, because the next, um, the way you get the, end, the handle ID is by counting how many environments you have. In this case, you have two, so the new handle would be environment two, but you already have an environment two. So if you do a push, what would happen is you would overwrite this location. And by overriding this location, you would have an error, right? You would have two, um, two pieces of code. Imagine old closures that are pointing to E2 would now be pointing to a wrong E2. So your code wouldn't work well. So if we just naively implement garbage collection into our interpreter, it wouldn't work because of how we implemented allocation. And the crucial point is that hash count needs to be revisited. So we might want to introduce the notion of moving versus non-moving garbage collection. And in non-moving, what you do is either you, there are two, basically there are two ways of, of trying to implement garbage collection. One is very simple, is you go through and you find all the reachable memory locations. What you do is you create a whole new location and you store it there. That is the moving garbage collector. The non-moving garbage collector means that you do, after you navigate, you just have flags or a way to do the change where you reclaim your data in place. So moving versus non-moving garbage collector, if you read about that, it's basically exp highlighting the difference where you can perform garbage collection in place or not. The problem of moving garbage collection is that now you need twice as much space, right? You need to allocate a new region so that you can move everything from one side to the other, where you can copy all your objects. If you copy references to the other memory location and therefore move them, you now have the problem of whether your references still are pointing to the right location or not. So you might be, you might also need to rearrange the, the addresses and rewrite them so that they are pointing to the right place. Additionally, the, that's the, the problem of, of moving. The problem of not moving them and doing all the changes in place is that you might just end up having your memory all fragmented because usually um, garbage collection is implemented over a contig contiguous region of memory, right? Like a, a very big array, basically. And if you do your uh, memory reclamation in place, now what you have is you have lots of little holes of perhaps fragments of 
areas that you could use to allocate memory, but perhaps they're too small to allocate them. So you, ha you get the fragmentation problems that are so well known. And that's why you don't, the reason of, of non-moving, why would you want to do it then? Well, you want to do it because you use, if you want to use, if you have memory constraints, right? If you, moving has the problem of needing twice as much memory. Non-moving, you use the same amount, but now you have the problem of fragmentation. It's really just how you, you implement mark and sweep. So in the next video, we're going to talk about homework six.